So it's getting a bit late tonight, but um, as is always being an architect, there's always deadlines and there's always things to do and there's always juggling a lot of projects. So I'm gonna sit down and work on the paint colors from Jenny's condo, which as you can see is coming along. And it's been a week, it's been a really busy week and I've gotta to leave tomorrow morning early on the road and take my son, my oldest, to college. So a lot of emotion going on there, but let's see if I can get through this kind of color story. As you saw in the last color story, um, I was really working with paint color and then kind of throwing in fabrics and wallpaper after that. For Jenny's condo, I've done it kind of the opposite where we've worked on fabric and wallpaper and now I'm gonna come in with the paint color. And the reason for that is that the first house was more of a gut from Ida, whereas Jenny's, I really had a lot of that exposed brick to work with. And often when I go to client's house, I have some kind of existing condition, maybe an existing piece of furniture, maybe something else to work with, whereas that other house, I really had a blank slate. So that question had popped up and I wanted to answer it, but certainly you can work from either perspective. Maybe you find a paint color you love and then you add on top of that, or maybe you find a fabric you love and then you work on top of that. So I've got Jenny's floor plans here. Again, it's four floors. You know what, I think I'm gonna start on the third floor. Oh, and I wanted to show you guys this. This came in from Anthropology. This is the light for the stair. So I don't have the light piece because we're taking it over to an electrical shop called Zito's here in New Orleans and seeing if we can rewire it with super long wire to hang 12 of these down from the ceiling. Yeah, three sources of light on each floor. It's 12 individual fixtures. It's individual little lantern things little that all start up here, that the wire is long. I think they're really cool, like little cloud puffs that might be coming down from the stairs. So really excited about that. So up on the third floor, you might remember it's the living room and we've got in the living room, we've got the huge sectional that's being made by Leonel's. So we've got the big coffee table. We're gonna have some kind of side table. We've got that great chair from Crown and Colony. Probably put something over here, but we really don't need much in this room. And um, oh, there's Lucy barking. The sectional is gonna be this beautiful fabric from uh, Rose Cumming and apparently they lost the screens to print this fabric, so it's being delayed, um, which is causing trouble for Leonel's, and I'm just hoping we've got it done in time because when you use a fabric like this that's not a real big, thick upholstery fabric, like say maybe this, you have to send it off to be backed, and so we've gotta send this off to be backed and the fastest place to do that is out in California. So the fabric gets sent to California and then it comes to New Orleans and Leonel's upholsters, the sectional. And then that great chair from Crown and Colony, we're gonna upholster in this. And finally, we had that fabric that I loved so much from Pierre Frey, which was like a piece of um, modern art to me. And it was so great, but it was, so super expensive and so I had to let it go and I still think what we're gonna do is gonna be incredible we found this piece from Schumacher called Paloma and so we're gonna use this instead so we're getting Narcissus going on the curtains which she's already measured for and of course we're creating some really beautiful cornices with this fabric so this is what we've got and then we've got a ton of exposed brick that we're whitewashing so I don't need much in here. I mainly just need a color for the casings through here. And I think what I wanna do is to take my paint fans over to the condo once we start washing the brick and do something that kind of matches the brick. So it all kind of creates this monochromatic background and then we plug in these colors into the space. 
So I think that'll be really pretty. Then going into the bar area, which is underneath the stair landing, finally got this sample in from Schumacher. It's an Ixel, I think that's how you say it, um, wallpaper. And it is this trellis design. Um, and then we had that red bar. So I wanted to match the trim and the ceiling to kind of this gray color. So I'm gonna see if we've got something that is along those lines. Let's go through my paint deck. That looks really kind of close, but maybe a little dark. That looks better. So that looks kind of nice. So that is elephant's breath. It's kind of hard to work with the deck when it's like this. And way too pink. Mm -hmm. This is almost when I might take the sample over to the paint store and say, we want that color, we want that beige. But I really like this color for the ceiling. That's not gonna do it. I've got one more set here. So this is called Charleston Gray, right? So this is what happens. I start looking at paint, then I get an idea, then I look at the fabric, and you totally kind of keep going back and forth. So we could do that. We could do this, which is a purpley black. Oh no, this one's called Pelt. So that's like a deep aubergine color, which is also pretty. Super purple, but also fun. This is called Baresca. And the reason I like using the board is you can step back. See what's going on. That's interesting. Let's see if I can find a little more of this brown. Although that's certainly, oh, that's too purple. These are getting way too blue. All right, so this isn't really working how I wanted it to work. Okay, so we've landed in a place I didn't expect to land in at all. I went through that whole thing of the purples and the grays, and then all of a sudden I put this guy up, which pulls out this deeper red, which is called preference red. Um, and it's really actually really nice. And so I've got the cabinets below, I've got wallpaper everywhere, I've got a gray colored marble. And then I just wanted, the only reason this is here is for a little bit of color and a little bit of pattern and a little bit of breakup um, on some cafe curtains. And I actually think what I might do, so I was thinking about this trim, but it could also be interesting to do two layers of curtains and to use this guy. And I think this starts being a really interesting composition. This is actually, I need my scissors. Anybody see what I need? Scissors? Oh, right here. Y'all probably all saw it. Okay. So this is a little fringe. This is so fun. It's a little big, but you have to remember the scale of the place is super big. It's too big. So this is good. This I think will be really beautiful as big pillows. I've been holding on to this for a while. I think we've got a really beautiful, interesting room going on. And of course this started as paint color, but I am thinking the paint color is gonna be around 
it's going to be somewhere in this color, but I've got to get into the brick and actually look. I think it almost needs to be lighter. I think it's going to be somewhere in the realm of this. Way too white. You can see even someone who's done this for a long time, it is literally trial by error. <laughs> Not sure. I guess you never end up with error, but you definitely go through a lot to get everything worked out. Now I'm wondering if the right move is to bring in a light gray on the windows, not be so matchy matchy. I think if I had this hue with a little more brown, this is so I'm looking for something right between these two. So I'm gonna pin it, step back. Okay, I really kind of like that color, which is, I've looked at it earlier, it's called Elephant's Breath. Um, but I need to look at it once the brick is whitewashed as well. And again, all these colors change when you're in the space. It's always so important to put up samples. See, then this looks brown when it's up against there. So we'll just have to see how that whitewash brick comes out. I like this too, though. Okay, I think this could kind of go either way. So. This is Elephant's Breath, and this is your, your Breath Stone. Y'all comment, which one do you like? I don't know. And of course, not satisfied till I go through the entire deck. No. <laughs> but I just have to look. This would be a more white version actually could work. This is a, a Mennonite. I'm happy right there. I've got four choices. I know the color value I'm trying to reach. Definitely going to need to put some samples up, but I think it's working. And this was right. Oh, that looks so pink. So pink. So that brings us, let's see, let's pin up our bar. Where did our bar go? So what I like about this is that if I carry the ceiling in here with the same color, it then ties in what might be going on with the trim here. So get this up, right? As you go into the kitchen that way, you come in this way. Okay, so what I was doing right there was, I do think I could go light, but I also think I could go dark, kind of picking up the bird's tail right there. And what I was doing was cutting this out to see what happened when it was up the top, right? So this bird is way down here at the bottom. But it looks like there's a little bit of that dark brown, blacky color. And so it could be cool to carry that over. Because again, you have to remember the ceiling's super low. But that's kind of fun to do. And then also paint out the window in that color. And it's kind of picking up the idea of the browns and the blacks. And this, and then we want to do some really cool sconces. It's super cool to have a big brass sconce in there, which I think would work well. Okay, so kitchen, bar, living room, the dining room comes off of the hall, which is basically all brick and also comes off of the kitchen. So I'm going to have to see what color we end up doing in the dining suite. That's not right either. So 
Okay. You're probably wondering what in the world am I doing now? Oh goodness. Okay. It's 11 p.m. and I've got to leave early in the morning. Um, but I was trying to play with maybe what we should do in the dining room. This is a beautiful fabric from Pierre Frey. You can see I'm kind of like pulling all these fabrics together. Um, and I think that it would be beautiful if we did the dining room walls in that color and then did these big draperies. We only have one window in there, so maybe we can do a bit more expensive fabric. And then I put up those black and white sketches um, to think about that it might be fun to do a series of black and white sketches throughout the living room. Um, certainly not nudes in the dining room. Um, but it could be fun to do something different, um, a black and white sketch sort of thing, and do kind of like a gallery wall within the dining room itself. I don't know, maybe we pull through the chairs and that, and the curtains or something different, and the walls are still that color. Actually, I really like that. It'd be great to upholster the chairs in this. You know what I'm thinking about it? You can see how this just kind of keeps like evolving itself. Um, no idea what I would do for the curtains in there at this point, but it's super pink. I work this late often and I get exhausted, but I feel like I finally have this where it needs to go and got some paint colors going. So it'll be on to, I still have the first floor and the second floor and the fourth floor to accomplish, but at least this is all getting to be in order. All right. Hope y'all have a good night. Bye. -bye.